Are we recording? I think so. I'm not sure. Yes, we are. All right. Usually I have a little sign that says record, but it's not there today. Oh, I but, see it. I see it on my side. Okay, good. So today we have the wonderful and beautiful Gabrielle. I'm going to let you say your last name because I Garo follow. Because I totally did not ask. That is on me. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. <laughs> And Miss Gabrielle has one hell of a resume, and uh, she sent it to me. And I, uh, she is in through. She does all sorts of stuff. You even have like a blog. I do, like a I food and drink blog. I do called "A Lady Walks Into a Bar." <laughs> That's amazing. That's an amazing name. Thank you. Please follow me on Insta and Facebook, and we'll definitely put all of those details down below. All right. Um, so would you like to introduce yourself and what you do? Yeah. Hi, everybody. And Brooke, thanks for having me. I'm super psyched to just be part of this wonderful opportunity. So I'm, I'm super visual, so I'm going to flip to a screen share and take us through. Look, there I am. Yeah. So that's me, and here's a small little exciting tidbit about that photo. I am illegally using it at the moment because I was just shot by the incredible photographer, Allison Michael Orenstein, who I credit with that on, she told me not to use it, so I'm sorry, Allison, but I confess I'm using it anyway. Because one thing to know about me is I'm a bit not of a nonconformist. So anyway, mm. super psyched to be here. Here's a tiny bit about me. You just um, shared a little bit that I have a food and drink blog called A Lady Walks Into a Bar, which was formed out of an entrepreneurial venture that I had several years ago when I owned a food and drink festival called, a, called Harvest on the Harbor in Portland. Wow. My background is in advertising and branding and uh, media. I worked for Newsweek and House and Garden, and then I became an entrepreneur and started my marketing consultancy and my... I think, I think I originally called it my seventh, but I wasn't counting my early career in the food service business as a wait person <laughs> and at a law firm I used to work for, but coaching is my 10th career. So now I'm also a life coach for women, mission to activate women globally, uh, to find or channel their passions into purpose at home and career and in the mirror. So, um, and then I do these other things like I'm a mom and a wife and a daughter and a triathlete sprinter. I do short versions of triathlons. Um, and I, you know, am a crazy passionate feminist and this is where to find me. <laughs> you're like the Renaissance woman. You're so well-rounded. Oh, that, well -rounded. thanks. <laughs> I love That's it. So nice. <laughs> yeah. And I think the key, you know, anyway, like this is not like an advice column, but I'm just going to do it anyway, is for anybody that this is for and for you and for women in particular, really, I think, you know, I'm not, people say, wow, your 10th career. And like, there's no shame in that because for me, it's been about trying to figure out my passion. So mm -hmm. follow your passion, people. That's all I got to say about that. There you go. You should never quit. There's never, yeah. there's never a time when you should be like, I'm done for. <laughs> yeah. And yes. like, let's move on to this shizzle, right? Yes. Yes. So she built this wonderful graph for us uh, today, which I know is totally outside the norms of our normal interview. So this ought to be nice. So I was thinking when Brooke said, would you like to speak with me about one of these topics? And I was like, yes, I would. And then I started to think about it. Um, and, and it just, and I kept going in a circle. Literally, like my brain was going like, well, hmm, which one was it going to be? Like, there's the perfectionist, right? Right there. It was right there. Oh, well, I don't know. Well, if I do that one, then maybe there's that one. And I'm a Libra, so I'm always balancing and weighing mm -hmm. considerations. But the thing that struck me as a mom, as, um, as someone, I ran uh, the global branded content team for the Wall Street Journal for three years as a bit of a hiccup in my entrepreneurship. Um, in 2012 to 2015. And during that time, I ran a really big global team and I was really like stuck in both imposter syndrome. Like, I can't believe they hired me to do this job. What were they thinking? And I better do it right and have it perfect. Otherwise they're going to figure out that I am actually a total imposter. Yes. So, but in that, you know, in that, in the struggle bus of those two, um, you're dealing with fear of failure, which is why you're trying to be so perfect. You're criticizing yourself because who's perfect? That's absurd. Mm -hmm. And you're ultimately keeping yourself from, from success, which, you know, 
I don't really have a fear of success. I didn't think until I kept realizing that I was failing at stuff, right? And then you have to get real with yourself about what is that about? Because yes, there is inherent failure in entrepreneurship, but I think that all of us have a little bit of a fear. I'm going to sort of equate fear of success with like living, living, or I'll, Oprah, I'll Oprah-fy it. Wait, there she is. There we are. There's Oprah. Oh, wow. Oh, in, Look my at that. Previous, in my previous life or the life I'm sort of moving out of in marketing consulting. But that was the year actually that inspired me as a life coach. Oh, really? Oh, wow. And then I ignored my instincts for seven more years, actually playing in these circles of entrepreneurship. And, and so I really decided that they were all connected and I think they play off of each other. And I'm mm-hmm. going to give just a couple of examples, I think. Yeah, um, that'd be great. At first, I want to talk just like about being a woman and a mom, because I think, you know, I think we forget that in our roles and in our relationships, this goes on. Yes. Right? Like this is going on in our relationships. And I used to have a mom, one of my best friends, mom always used to say to me, like, I'm a singer, but I want, there was a time I wanted to be a professional singer. And she'd be like, girl, you fake it till you make it. You act like Mariah Carey. You own the stage. Like, you know, she would really be like, you embody that persona. And I was like, there's no way I'm ever going to, you know, I mean, the, I was so caught up in yeah. my inner critic and imposter syndrome and massive feel of failure, but also worse fear of success. Like, what if I really had my dream come true? Mm-hmm. And that was such a mess of a tack to take both as, you know, I gave up singing as a result of, of, of not figuring that out. And also like outside influences telling me like, you can't really do that. You need a real career parents, right? <laughs> yeah, parents. Industry, like who, there are no redheads that are fake. Like you should dye your hair brown or blonde. Like there was just a lot going on around that. And I mm-hmm. didn't have that centerpiece called thought work mastered. I mean, mm-hmm. mastered, that's sort of a joke, but um, <laughs> it's I didn't have an awareness even that there was thought work involved yeah. to know, to talk myself out of all of the, the mind crack that goes mm-hmm. on up there. So I would say as a young person and as trying to find my career, we can get really screwed up stuck in these in these concepts, right? Separate or together, right? Some people not experience it the way that I do, which is... Mm-hmm that they're all connected and that they play off of each other. And sometimes some are stronger than others, depending on the venture. Right. Or or the experience like motherhood. Yeah. You, that's why, you know, the higher power, God, whatever your beliefs are, has you baked that in there. If you're, you know, if you're biologically able to do that for 10 months or there was such long processes with surrogates and adoption. Like mm-hmm. I think the world is structuring you to like get ready. And then like you're handed this small human being. And if you've never had imposter syndrome before, that's when it really <laughs> kicks in for you. Right? Yeah. Even biologic, like a human yes. being came out of my body. They gave me the human being. And I was like, you got the wrong dude. Yeah. Like, I definitely don't know what to do with that at all but your body does right Mm -hmm. and talk about feel of fear of failure perfectionism inner critic like you know our entire society with women generally is built on making sure that you work toward perfection that you are filled with insecurities about everything from your looks to your weight to how you move to what you wear to how you smell to what your hair is i mean that's just built into being a woman. But yeah. I did, I, you might recall the feminist part of the slide before, <laughs> right? So that's all built in. But yes. the thing that is in the center of all of this and that's never been more powerful for me is the thought work. Because yeah. every time, oh, and the other thing in common about one, two, three, four, all five of these is that they are stoppers, right? Like, they're like mm-hmm. wedges in progress. They are halts in innovation. Yeah. They are they are actually built into so I mean, I'm obsessed with Brene Brown and her latest, you know, Netflix Call to Courage special really talks about how corporate culture sometimes is sort of built on all of these things, yep. not quite 
this exact structure, but you know, a lot of fear of failure and a lot of like, you know, do it this way and oppression. Oh, and God, yes. I used to be like that. I hate to say it's like a global senior person at the wall street journal. Like I was such a micromanager because I was so afraid of something going wrong. Mm-hmm. I mean, eventually I learned and I empowered my people and I sent people around the world to go do their jobs. Um, but you know, it was a really painful process for them and for me trying to uphold some ridiculous idea of how it's supposed to be, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think America, you know, American society and our culture, especially today where everything is so public and on social media Mm -hmm. and like everybody looks at Gary Vaynerchuk or Tony Robbins, or, I mean, you know, I don't know, um, um, Aaron judge of the Yankees or JLo and a rod whom I'm obsessed with, by the way, (laughs) um, you know, like I love them, but like you look at these people and you're not so much understanding (laughs) the process by which, this affects everybody. The difference between them and everybody else is they have mastered the thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yes. And mastering it is not like they disappear because they don't. I mean, I had it all day. I mean, I changed this chart like five times, obviously, <laughs> dealing with some, you know, something in there. Yes. You know, but what I realized, like, it was almost immediate was I can't talk about one without the other. So I think as a mom, as a woman, um, and most certainly as an entrepreneur, you know, I have had, you know, my marketing consultancy, a food and drink festival, um, a laundromat that I invested in and then never even, like I put money into it and never bought it and like lost the whole investment, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I started this food and drink blog actually as a business purpose behind the food festival, which I then sold. I built a whole brand, had a toxic business partnership. Talk about like, I was like, I am not going back out of that. Right? Feel it, I'm like, I will not fail. I rebuilt that brand. This is my brand. Wait, hold on. I like how it's like show and tell in my office, but this was my food (laughs) festival. And I created this whole logo and the whole color palette and all those illustrations with my, creative director. And I was like, I really was proud of it. But Mm -hmm. ultimately, you know, it wasn't serving me. So I, you know, it came back to the thought work, like, it's not a failure to walk away from something that doesn't serve you. And it's not a failure to, to like, I mean, I hear this from, you know, people who've gone to, I have a really, really, very, very good, hugely successful friend of mine who is a very senior executive um, at the NBA, at the National Basketball Association. And he went to medical school. He made his parents send him to medical school and then he dropped out and took like a zero paying job for the NBA in New York. They were like, what? You know, he was like, yeah, sorry. Like, you know, and ultimately Mm -hmm. it's paid off. But I think like, he he went through this whole idea of thought work around his and and think about that like that's a big departure but i do hear that a lot from medical students or people who've spent their whole life in business and then they become a gym teacher or whatever so Mm -hmm. i think um sorry i sort of like got off the choo-choo but i think these things come into play and more times than not we will get stuck in them yes And we will circle around one or two of them and stay stuck because ultimately I think we are inclined to play small Mm -hmm. and be exposed. Exactly. Being exposed is dangerous in our heads. Well, yeah. And I think like society has made it sort of scary, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like, I mean, I used to really care what people think. I underline the word used to with like bold Sharpie (laughs) used to many colors. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but you know, I'm 51 years old and it took me until a very short time ago and I still get caught up a little bit in like not wanting to be judged for my kids or not wanting Mm -hmm. to be judged for my husband or whatever, or, you know, not wanting to disappoint my parents, like, Mm -hmm. you know, all of these things. But again, Oh, by the way, all of that relational stuff fits right into this chart. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I think like, again, 
that's the thing about relationships, right? Like one of a couple of my favorite people are always like, well, first of all, when you point over at you, where's that thumb pointing back? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and the other thing is like, you can't change anybody else. Correct. Right. And all of this perfectionism, inner critic, fear of success, imposter syndrome, fear of failure is really outside influence in when you think about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we really born and we start questioning our own amazingness? No, because we learn how to crawl and roll over and do things inherently as human beings without <laughs> anybody, right? Like someone could literally look at us and say, you can't roll over and we're eventually going to figure that out because yeah. biomechanically we're meant to move that way, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that all of these are learned things. Yes. And the thought work is the unlearning of them exactly. or the acknowledging when they show up. Mm -hmm. And deciding who's going to be more powerful, right? The move, the forward movement or the same old story. Yeah. I usually call that who's driving the bus. I who's love, gonna, oh. Who's going to drive the bus? <laughs> yeah. 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 I find that a lot of times we allow ourselves to let certain emotions or thoughts take over that. And um, we lose control. And part of it is learning how to go back into the driver's seat. Because there is an there is an executive view, absolutely. Who stands I'm, outside all of these? Yeah, I'm stopping the share for a second. Okay. I just wanted to come back to screen. But the one other thing I wanted to talk about before I can see, like, I'm watching the time, so I want to wrap it up. But the fear word, fear. I don't know if you've heard this before, but I'm a fan of the acronym: false evidence appearing real. Real. Yeah. Yes. So you know. Really, if you take away the fear in those in that, it's failure and success, right? Which are two parts of the same coin. Coin, exactly. You know, and the other thing I love that Brene Brown says, and I will leave us on this note, is that, you know, you cannot innovate and you cannot lead without vulnerability. And you cannot be vulnerable without knowing you're going to mess it up. Exactly. You know, it's just like, you know, what is it the the phrase, it's not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's exactly. A That's a wrap. <laughs> Don't you just love her? Oh my goodness. Oh, this is why we did it this way, because I just knew she was going to shine oh, all on her so own. Beautiful, Brooke. Thank you so much. That's Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. And I will be putting all of her details, like I said, down below, so you can stalk her as much as you want. Please do. You know, in a respectful way. Yeah, I should probably put that in a respectful way. <laughs> absolutely. Or I just block y'all. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> we will talk to you later. Yeah. Thank please. you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Do you want to stop?